what do you think of my dress? It's the new Real Garden Camo from Dick's Sporting Goods. Just kidding, I've had this dress for ages. I probably got it from Kroger. I'm author Gwen Elise Clayton. Although I write paranormal fiction, my books aren't just about ghosts and witches and vampires. They all have settings and characters and plot that mimic life in the real world. Here on the Rivervine YouTube channel, I'm trying to create that setting in real life, sort of like my very own Rivervine Utopia. Part of that utopia is having a garden full of native plants that build the soil and attract beneficial critters like insects and birds. Deer are not beneficial. I'm not growing vegetables or ornamentals, although I do have some peonies left over from the previous owners. The deer didn't touch those. The peonies are spent now, so maybe they bloomed before fawning season, I don't know. This is my first year here and I've never had peonies before. I've never tried to garden in deer territory either. When I lived in Amador County, California, Everything was forested, so there was no point in even trying to garden. But now I'm in the suburbs of Kentucky on one acre of land inside the city limits. I'm trying to build a pollinator garden, but I can't attract the beneficials if the deer keep rushing to the front of the buffet line. I have always been told the deer eat everything. When I went to buy plants for my garden this year, the guy at the nursery said deer will eat everything if they're really hungry, but they tend not to like plants with fuzzy leaves or strong odors. And then if you look at the little sticks inside, the little taggy things inside the plants, they, some of them specifically say deer resistant. And and it's the same when you try to shop for plants online. They say, quote unquote, deer resistant. So I stocked up on those and then of course I wanted more plants. So I tried to tuck in the non-deer resistant plants with the deer resistant plants, hoping I'd be safe. Oh no, take a look at my garden this year. And this is what it looks like now. Funny thing though, the deer are afraid of my Bigfoot statue. So they didn't even touch my Squatch Garden. It's so funny. And so the other day I had to run back up to Imel's and get a couple more. They even had a girl Squatch. I'm calling her a Squatchette. According to the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife Resources, deer control options are hunting, repellents, scare tactics like my Bigfoot statues, and fencing. I live in the city limits and this video is being recorded in July, which is way out of deer hunting season. And I'm pretty sure that you're not allowed to hunt within the city limits, but I could easily see a frustrated homeowner taking one look at that website and saying, oh, I can hunt deer on my own property. Why not? So 
just in case, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you can hunt. I don't know. I've never, I'm not a hunter and I've never lived in Kentucky before. So maybe you can hunt on your own property within the city limits in July, but I don't think so. So I did write to the public information officer at the city of Ashland and, uh, and asked her, why not? So uh, she hasn't gotten back to me yet, but I'm, she's probably laughing at me. Probably, I'm probably the joke of the city administration building. Some crazy lady thinks you can hunt in the city limits. Oh well. Um, it's not the dorkiest thing I've ever done, I'll tell you that. What I am fantasizing about though, and maybe I'll work this into one of my fiction stories sometimes, is having a Hunger Games type scenario where all of the humans and their pets and their livestock hunker down one day out of the year and then all of the wolves and mountain lions from the wildlife refuge are allowed to just roam the city streets and they can just prey on all the deer and the raccoons and the gophers and whatever else is eating my petunias. Oh, funny story. The other day, my husband went to throw some trash away and he found a baby raccoon in our garbage can. Like, how did it get, I don't, we have no idea how the raccoon got there or how long it had been there because trash day I think was Friday. So my husband pulled the, the garbage can out onto the lawn and very gently lowered it down and, and opened up the lid. And the little raccoon just kind of crawled out a little bit at a time. And he just stared at, at Eddie and said like, are you my mama? <laughs> it's funny. And then he looked at me and ran away. Like, what's up with that? Seriously though, the whole reason we have a deer problem is because there are natural predators such as wolves and mountain lions have disappeared from Kentucky and other parts of the United States and everywhere else. Bears sometimes eat deer. We do have black bears in Kentucky and bear will eat deer usually as carrion though they don't hunt so much um as do bobcats and coyotes but they are not hardened hunters like the wolves and the and mountain lions i'm not going to go into a diatribe right now about about loss of habitat and wildlife urban what, what wildland urban interface there i got it out because you've heard that a million times and we already know all of that. I want to know what I can do right now to help keep deer out of my yard and out of everybody else's yard or out of the streets because they could leave my garden and then go where? Get, get killed by a car? Get hit by a car? Like where do they go when they leave everybody's garden is zero proofed where do they go that's what I want to know and why can't they stay there until I can get those questions answered here's what I'm going to do I ended up at Lowe's and I got some of the stinky deer repellent stuff I think it was called liquid fence or something like that and of course after I bought it, I watched a YouTube video on DIY deer repellent, and it's made out of almost the same stuff. And I could have saved myself 30 bucks, I think it was 30 bucks or something like that. And all of the plastic that goes into the landfill, which I hate, I really hate plastic. But anyhow, I will link that video in the description box so that you can go watch it and save yourself 26 bucks or however much it costs. But the reason I bought this deer repellent is because the main ingredient was putrescent whole eggs. And of course, of course, being the Princess Bride fan that I said, I had to say it in ancient Boer voice. The queen of putrescents. I was hesitant to use repellent in the first place because if something repels one pest, it will repel the beneficials. So you may remember that from my cypress chips or cedar chips video that I did a few weeks back. I didn't want to use cedar chips as my mulch because they repel moths. So if you're 
doing a pollinator garden, you don't want to use cedar chips as your mulch. So I'm thinking, does the, does the same thing apply to this liquid fence stuff? Do, do the good bugs, are the good bugs and the good beneficials, the good beneficials, as opposed to the bad beneficials, um, are they repelled by the, the putrescent whole eggs and the garlic and the thyme and whatever else is in there? But I ended up going with that because if the the plants aren't allowed to grow, they can't, the, the pollinators can't get to them anyways. So first the plants have to grow to a decent size and then we can have the pollinators come. So that was plan A. I'm not gonna do the fencing. The electric fencing I have concerns with also, same thing. I'm afraid they're gonna throw off the bees and the birds and any other good guys that rely on electrical waves to do their little migration patterns and whatever whatever animals do. And I'm also afraid of EMFs. That's why I don't have, I don't have a smart speaker. I'm like the only person alive who doesn't have an Alexa. And I don't have a Roomba either. None, none of those things. I don't my I don't have a Bluetooth refrigerator or anything like that. You can do this thing with fishing wire because it's kind of inexpensive, but um, and you can cage it. You could get like chicken wire cage. A lot of people do that too. Um, I just didn't didn't like the looks of that. So I'm gonna try the stinky egg thing and see if that works. If not, I'm gonna have to go to to fencing because. The next option is to get a dog, and Eddie and I are not pet people. I love other people's pets, but yeah, don't want one for myself. If you are one of my neighbors and you happen to be walking your dog and your dog happens to see a deer in my yard and decides to run and chase the deer out of my yard, that would be okay. Just please don't don't let them poop in my yard. Don't Don't do that. I used to live in a second story apartment that overlooked a an alleyway and people would be walking their dogs and their dogs would do their business and people would look forward and they would look backward but they never looked up and so I'd be sitting on my balcony and I could see them walking away with a big pile of dung left on the street so yeah don't do that it's not cool anyway the other plan I have is to look into these wildlife sanctuaries around here. I don't really know where I'm going with that thought, but I feel a field trip coming on soon. And you can bet I'll be making a video about it. So stay tuned. In the meantime, please give this video a thumbs up if you found it interesting or informative. And be sure to subscribe to the Rivervine YouTube channel for more quality content. I'm your host, Gwen Elise Clayton. I drop videos every Tuesday evening. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.